uh, of the team came out, got funding from us and some other investors, and have really been kicking butt. Um, and, and finally, uh, there's one called Vicky. It's a Korean company, but uh, not so much focused on mobile, but there's sort of a ubiquitous platform. If you want to watch, say, Korean dramas or Korean K-pop, you can watch this um, video channel. And, and this, uh, so essentially, it's translated by you know people all over the world. So it's, it's basically crowdsourced translation on a desktop or mobile platform. Awesome. So what are some of the latest mobile trends that you guys are excited about? Android versus iOS, consumer versus enterprise. Anything that you found the most interesting? Um, I guess one of the most exciting trends is probably uh, uh, international audiences that have primarily been feature phone adopting mobile phones in droves. So probably, uh, I don't know, I'm guessing numbers in India are probably like 30 to 50 million smartphones on the way to 200 to 300 million in the next couple of years. In Brazil, it's probably around 15 to 20 on the way to 100, 150. In China, I'm sure it's kind of like, I don't know, probably 50 to 100 on the way to half a billion soon. Um, so, like, uh, particularly East Asia, South Asia, and Latin America, probably, um, you know, Arabic-speaking market over the next few years also, or just, like, vast audiences of feature phone kind of users adopting uh, smartphone and mobile. Um, not to say that you can't develop apps for feature phones and SMS, but that's a little bit harder. Um, there are some interesting uh, SMS-based apps opportunities as well, and uh, bottom of the pyramid sort of stories that aren't so bottom of the pyramid in all those countries. But I think you know, really, really big international markets that are probably uh, Mandarin, English, Spanish, and Arabic speaking. Those are kind of the ones that we've been focusing on. Um, and then, like I mentioned, I think education markets. So um, uh, really seeing lots of young users uh, adopt um, you know, iPad and tablet-based solutions and Probably those are still not super monetizable, uh, except maybe in you know, Western markets, but we expect that most all of those solutions will have credit cards attached to them and that education uh, apps is just a vastly uh, underdeveloped for market, uh, which mostly single male developers don't really understand. So we're kind of <laughs> going after that uh, with uh, people who are a little bit more aware of that market. I uh, have kids that are five and seven. So how many of you are working on a women-focused app? One. Right. <laughs> So, great opportunity for arbitrage since not just half of the population of users, but more than half of the population of users, and probably two thirds of the monetization of users or more is women. So, uh, there's kind of a really big opportunity for people to develop apps for women, family, and kids, which usually most of you guys who are single and male in the room have no fucking clue about. <laughs> I just had to slip that one in. Oh. <laughs> Got a question already. <laughs> well, we're, we're into superior experiences. I mean, you use a consumer or enterprise, and I agree with Dave's point about global, and it's interesting some of the niches you mentioned. I mean, they're, they're huge niches. And <laughs> sometimes majority in case women. But I, I, I think we're interested in superior experiences, and by that I mean things that literally leverage, um, for lack of a better word, the mobile specific capabilities of the device. Um, I, I, I think Dolphin's done, done a great job of that. You know, you know, simple things like gestures, because you, know, you don't have your full keyboard right there. So you want the light closer to your mouth? Like yeah, absolutely. Is this better? Yeah. yeah, so like, you know, have, have, come on. So, you know, for example, having gestures, I, I think that's something that's really well thought of. I think it was huge in there in, in their uh, recent adoption. Um, you know, you saw a lot of things that Instagram did. You know, people talk about filtering. You know, I kind of view Instagram or or our investment video, these guys think about one button, one button effects on, on content, which is just far simpler on mobile. So we're really looking for superior mobile experiences that really um, leverage the native, native I don't know if you call it native capabilities, but the, the core capabilities of the device. You know, we were frustrated probably in the earlier part of you know, mobile 1.0, or you know, maybe pre-iPhone, that a lot of things that were in the device weren't exposed to developers, and developers couldn't actually build to that. So we're really looking or seeing stuff, and if you got stuff, come by and see me um, if you leverage uh, the phone in, in unique ways. 
So I have to agree with the points. Obviously, you know, being international as a developer, you have to think about that early than later. Uh, not only for you know the, the you know the, the uh, UI, but sort of the business case, right? I mean, there's lots of ways people access information and content in Asia, and definitely working with a carrier, you see it from the viewpoint of, well, we built this 4G LTE network. How do we how do we justify it? We've got to create content. We've got to create all the stuff that people will help us monetize to you know to to make it seem uh, very logical. And so I've, I've talked to the Verizon guys, very similar. Um, perspective as, as they do in SK being the largest carrier in Korea. But definitely from an underground level, you know, on the developer side, one of the startups that I work with, I think, you know, thinking about ubiquity, uh, and you know, there's a big move in Asia I'm seeing, not so much in the game side, more so, sort of service side uh, to HTML5. And, and because the push from the carrier side is also, I want to access information on all devices. Whether well, it's the same game that I'm playing on the tablet, I walk into my living room, I can play it on my TV. Uh, even with the OEMs, Samsung and LG, they're all thinking the same way. But I think that the big challenge is sort of the chasm that you've got to cross with the porting or telling everybody, you know, everybody to build on one on platform. So I think that education process is happening, but definitely it's taking a while for it to sort of sink down to developers who've built in you know, one way, I think, in Asia, because uh, it's usually mobile first, PC second. That's sort of the theme with uh, investments and, and new companies I see. And on that note, I think in terms of HTML5, um, we're going to showcase Wikipedia web app today. Um, but there's a lot more that needs to be done, especially if you think about it. There's no concept of HTML5 app store. There's no concept of how do you actually do payment. But there's so much more uh, that can be done around HTML5. Um, with a large audience of developers here today, a lot of us are thinking about raising, raising money, maybe the first round, second round. What are some of the tips that you guys have for our fellow audience. <laughs> I had to think before that anymore. Um, I think it depends who you're talking to. I think that I mean these are famous guys here, um, and I think they're famous because they've got lots of experience. You know, dealing with early stage companies, dealing with all kinds of different genres of of uh, you know types of technologies, whether it's mobile or web. But I think from my point of view, because I wear two hats, one is very late. You know, corporate dev, corp dev side. The other is very early, and you know, it's it's a lot of it's a combo. It really depends on where the company is. For example, in Korea, I talked to developers there. They're like, we have to go to Silicon Valley. We have to go there. You know, they saw the you know the social network too many times or something. But <laughs> um, but you know, we, we always say to them, do well in your backyard first. You know, this is your market. Do well do well here first before you move to Silicon Valley, where it's super competitive and they'll eat your lunch. But you know, I think talk to the right people that will give you that perspective of what your strengths and weaknesses are. You have to be very transparent with people that you speak with to know what your weaknesses are. I think it's a very basic thing, but I think it it all goes back to you know building a good business and making it defensible. And I think also you know when you talk to developers here, a lot of them also want to go to go global. I think being very region specific is important, and you know who you deal with. Obviously, the carriers before, as they was mentioning, is very you know Java based. You had to go through BD guys, it takes forever. Uh, but I think now it's a lot more open. For example, T-Store, which is like I think the fourth largest Android marketplace is uh, within SK's umbrella, uh, has really been you know, a big driving force in Asia because they're already importing games that have come in, say, from the West to China Mobile to Japan because they all want content. And you know, they've been you know, developing Android very early. So I think know your markets well. And, and for me, it, 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 just, it, it really depends on which market that you're targeting and it depends if it's purely mobile, if it's not, then you know what's your business plan? I think it's a bit harder to squeeze out $100 million out of a mobile company. I could be wrong, but definitely on the web side, I think think about all devices. Think about mobile as an interface. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think you just build a great product and find traction somewhere. I mean, you know, uh, if people here were talking, David was talking about... Um, uh, is this closer? Uh, we're... <laughs> <laughs> you know, Find your market, and you know women's a big market. But if you had one group of women, and you were getting traction there, and then you think that that could there could be a spillover effect into other markets of women, I think that would be a great thing. I think people here want—I mean, the investor community wants to see traction, great product and traction. So, um, I mean, it's kind of weird for me. I'm on the venture side right now, but I was an entrepreneur before, and it's a pain in the ass raising raising money at, at any time. It's seed, it's Series A. At least it was for me. 